Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, welcome back to another episode. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Alex George, I make health content as well as content around some of my hobbies, including uh, cars and properties when we're not in COVID times. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do so by clicking a subscribe below and turn notifications on so that you can receive notifications when I'm uploading a video. You join me here in my uh, uh, house in uh, London, or at least where I'm staying in London. Uh, I am not in a &E today and so I'm creating a video for you guys. This video is about how to use the home testing kits for COVID-19. These are swab tests that get sent to your home uh, and you're able to do a self swab uh, of your nose and throat. This then gets sent away and uh, analysed as to whether you have COVID-19, as to whether you have the coronavirus. So this is what today's video is all about. I'm actually going to be doing the swab on myself to show you guys. Just to be absolutely clear, I do not have symptoms of COVID-19. I am doing this as a demonstration uh, just to give you guys some tips basically. I'm not in any today as I said, so I'll be doing this uh, uh, swab uh, at my desk actually over here. Some of the stuff and the kit is actually already laid out. Right, before I show you how to use these test kits, let's talk about the track and trace uh, kind of uh, initiative, uh, the process and why we're really doing it, because I think that's quite important as well to, to understand. So the track and trace, the idea behind it essentially is to identify people that have coronavirus as early as possible, get them to isolate, and also identify their contacts, people that they've been around, so we can get them to isolate too. Essentially, trying to reduce the R number, the reproduction number. We're trying to reduce the number of cases of coronavirus that gets passed on, ultimately. So, what we think is that the coronavirus has a natural R number of three. What that means is that if one person has the coronavirus, and they kind of go about their daily activities, it's likely that they will give that to at least three people. To reduce the number of cases, the total number of cases in the UK, we need an R number of less than one. For the last few weeks, we believe it's been between 0.6 and 1, so the cases are dropping drastically. Now that the cases are low enough, what we want to do is keep this number down, reduce the spread of the, of the virus, and therefore allow us to start getting back to some normality. So that's why it's so important to do this. And so if you have symptoms of the coronavirus, if you have the high uh, temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius and above, the persistent cough, the loss of taste or smell, any of those symptoms, you should be isolating for seven days if you live alone and 14 days if you live in a household. And in fact, if you have those symptoms, the whole household should be isolating. And this is where the track and trace comes in. I'm going to leave the link below of the website. You need to click to go to the track and trace website to get all this information, to get the links to be able to get the test too. So all the information is going to be there and leave that down below. Right, now let's get on with showing you how to actually use the swabs and how to do the test. So I'm going to turn the camera around first of all and show you guys uh, to the desk that I'm using uh, and the actual kit and what kind of comes uh, in that. So first of all, You've got this um, instructions leaflet, which is very useful. It literally takes you step by step, uh, everything that you need to do uh, when you're doing the test, so that's really handy. Um, you've got the actual uh, swab kit itself, so that's got, um, it's sealed and it's got the uh, test tube in there, and it's also got the uh, swab stick there, which you will take uh, you know, a swab from your throat, and you can actually see uh, the, the end of it there. Fine, you've also got this um, uh, small, uh, a plastic clear sleeve uh, in which you'll put this absorbent pad uh, in with the swab kit when you're going to send it so that goes in there with this and then the whole thing goes into this bag here this larger bag that you can seal you have a box which you will give to a courier uh, to be able to send this away uh, with a uh, label as well as stick on the outside. You also have these these barcodes which you will stick onto the actual um, test tube itself and allow you therefore to identify it and then you put this also on the outside of your bag. There's also a security seal as well that you'll use to fill up the bag. I think we can already say that the most difficult thing to do in this test can be making this box. I mean look at that. At least there's instructions on the back so we'll test my uh, DIY skills at the end. So if you go online, order the home testing kit using the link below, you will get this kit sent to you. As soon as the kit arrives, you need to arrange the courier, uh, the collection date for the courier to come and fetch this from you. The reason this is so important is when you take the swab, you need to get it sent off as quickly as possible. Around 72 hours, I believe, and beyond, the test can be actually invalid. So you need to get that organised. So as soon as this arrives, 
go online, follow the link and the, and the guidance that's in there. Uh, it will tell you how to organize the courier. And then you should be taking the swab uh, uh, late at night uh, before the collection next day or the morning of the collection. Again, the guidance around that and specific timings are in the link. Right, let's sit down and do this. So a few housekeeping bits first. When the uh, test kit arrives, make sure you wash your hands for 20 seconds afterwards. Uh, when you're going to do the test, choose a, a surface that's kind of appropriate, like a, a desktop, a table like this, or a kitchen surface, but clean that surface properly beforehand and let it uh, dry. Right, I'm going to show you guys where you need to be swabbing. So you're going to be going for the tonsils and also in uh, both of your nostrils as well. So what you need to do is find a mirror, there's a mirror behind this camera, uh, that you could have a look and see and identify your tonsils. If you've had your tonsils taking out, you should be swabbing where your tonsils were before. Right, now the next step, once you've identified your tonsils and where you're going to be going, you need to blow your nose and cough slightly so that we can clear your airways. Um, so I'll go and do that and wash my hands as well so that I'm ready to uh, start the test. Right, so let's take the swab. So the first thing you need to do is get hold of your uh, swab kit like so. You can see this here. Uh, you can see it shows you how to open actually the back. So when you do it, have a look at the back if you're unsure how to open this. Um, but you peel it at the top like so. So you're, I'm peeling it back like this, which exposes the base of the swab. So you can see the base of the swab stick right there. So that's what you're gonna be holding. It's very important you don't touch the other, other end of the swab because you can contaminate the results for obvious reasons. Uh, you'll also see that within this, there is a uh, liquid. The liquid needs to remain in that pot. So be very careful you don't pour that away. Right, now what I'm gonna do is take this actual container out, very carefully take the container out without touching the other swab, take off the lid and pop it on the side. Obviously don't knock it over. Try and do your best not to knock it over because that is a bit of a nuisance, then you have to reorder another test kit, so be careful with that one. Right, now I'm gonna do this actual swab. This is the tricky bit of the test. Make sure you hold the base of the swab, take it out of the pack, do not let that touch anything else. Be very, very careful. When you're gonna do the swab of your tonsils, open your mouth widely, look in the mirror, and make sure you're swabbing the tonsils only. Don't touch your teeth or the gums, because some of the bacteria or, or the things that are on there can actually mess up the result, basically. So be very, very careful. It's gonna go in there, it's gonna touch both tonsils, it's gonna be in my, in my throat for 10 seconds, okay? Some people say do five whole rotations on each tonsil. Uh, either I think is absolutely fine. So let's do this. I'm gonna try and do this now without gagging if I can. So I'm gonna do this swab now. You're not gonna be able to see, but you'll have to trust me. I'm gonna look in the mirror and do this, okay? Alright, uh, and out. So it's very careful to keep your mouth wide, not let it touch anything either side. Now make sure you don't touch that, okay? Because that's now got to go up your nose without touching anything else. Right, so now I'm going to put this in my nose, in each of my nostrils. So what you need to do is put it at this kind of angle into your nose. It needs to go about two to two and a half centimetres into your nose uh, until the point basically you feel a bit of resistance. Don't force it. Uh, you don't want to cause bleeding or anything like that. So it's going in each nostril for about 10 to 15 seconds. Right, let's go. Not sure why, but maybe my eyes water a little bit, but anyway. So yeah, 10 seconds each side. We're gonna now pop this in the pot. So this is a bit that's really, really important to get right. So obviously hold this upright. Don't get the liquid spill anywhere. Straight in with it to the bottom, and then you will bend it. If you can see where the black line is, you bend it and it snaps off nicely. Lid, straight on the pot. Next, we need to put a label on this. We need to get this right. But first of all, wash your hands. Because if you've been touching your nose, touching your mouth, it's really important. So I'm gonna put this down and I'm going to wash my hands. See you in a minute. Right, now uh, it's time to label this up, package it up and do the hardest bit, which is put this flipping box together. Right, so next we need to actually put the barcodes on this. So if I go and find this, so this, these are the barcodes that you have. So you remove the, uh, the said barcode. And you know, you need to put this vertically on the test tube. That's what it should be like properly. So once you've done that, you get this, you get your absorbent pad like this, and you put it inside of um, the first plastic bag, this one, the clear one. Drop it all in there, and that's absolutely fine. Next step, we're going to put this into the biohazard bag, which is this one. Next thing you need to do is peel the silver bit off so that you can seal the actual bag. So if you just grab one of the corners and pull it like so, and then fold it, that is then 
nicely sealed. So then what you do is use your second barcode to put it on the bag like this. You can again identify this when this comes in. It allows them to kind of track the whole thing. The other two barcodes you keep for your own reference, so keep a hold of those. Right, now let's do the most difficult bit. Let's put this box together, shall we? So I need to have a look at this for a minute. Let's have a go. So now that I've made this box, which took far too long, uh, I'm now going to put the sample in there. So you get your sample bag, which is labelled and ready to go. You put that in here. I promise you it's trickier than it looks. Um, everything in this is very simple, just this flipping box. Anyway, fine. There, it's done. It's closed. Now what you do is that you need to actually put the security seal over it. So, right, now that it's got the security seal on it, all it needs now is this. Right, so then you peel this Royal Mail uh, sticker off, you put it on top of the box, and it's ready to go. Right, so that's ready now for the courier to collect it and take it. So that's that done. Right, so what happens next? Well, now that you've done uh, the swab test and you've sent it off to the courier, it'll take around two to three days to find out the results of your test. And um, you'll be contacted by one of the test and trace teams if you test positive for coronavirus. If you test negative, usually you'll get a text result uh, saying that you don't have coronavirus. Now, while you're waiting for the test, it's really important that you and the rest of your household continue to self-isolate uh, while you're waiting those results. That's super important. If you do test positive, Positive, one of the test and trace team will be in contact with you and will advise you what to do next and give you advice with regards to uh, your household as well. They'll also take information off you uh, with regards to who you've been in contact with so they can speak with them and advise them to self-isolate too. Now with regards to guidance around specific situations uh, it's best to head to the website with a link below to, to check that out. There's a lot of guidance on there and there's a lot of information depending on your circumstances so I'm not going to go into that here in this video. So I hope this this video has been useful and given you an insight into how to do one of these tests. One of the things I really would say is remember to organise your courier with Royal Mail as soon as uh, you get the test because um, you know it is time sensitive and that's very important. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope it's been useful. Please do remember to subscribe, comment below any questions you have and I'll try and jump in the comments and give you any guidance that you need uh, around these questions. Anyway guys, take care and stay safe. Goodbye.